How's it going guys, TexHD here with a brand new GM mode series where I'm going to be racing to the cup with Don't Be Sod 20. So basically guys, it's like a GM mode versus series where me and Don't Be Sod will be competing against one another to see who can win a Stanley Cup first. For this series guys, we decided to use the Boston Bruins as we feel like the Boston Bruins are kind of like in the between uh, both like contenders for the Stanley Cup as well as rebuild, like they're somewhere in between. And because of that, it'll be interesting to see like what each of us does with the team. So obviously guys, we're gonna get started here with the Bruins. Uh, make our GM mode, or make our GM name, make these settings, and then get into it. Uh, both me and Sarmi are using the exact same settings, so he sent me the settings he's using, so that'll be all fair. Um, as you guys can see right here, the Boston Bruins, 88 offense, 89 defense, and 93 goaltenders what we have to work with. Obviously, obviously, we already have our starting goaltender there in Tuka Rask. Two top centers there in Bergeron and Krejci. I think we definitely can uh, add some wingers and add some defensive depth to this team, though, in terms of actually being able to contend. Um, average age is also 27, which is pretty old, so... Um, in terms of like competing now, we do have a small window, and then we're gonna definitely have to start rebuilding. So, if I can actually click A there, there we go. Um, we'll get this started. So, calorie, salary cap is definitely on. Uh, rules and setting here: fancy draft off, authentic cap penalties on, off twenty five on. He has this at superstar. Um, he's got injuries off. All right, Sod, if that's how you want to do it. I, I, I like in injuries on sometimes to like mix it up. But I guess this is just to make it more like. You don't want to win, I guess, or you don't want to lose, I guess, if like your star guy, star guy goes down for the whole season. Period length, four minutes, trade difficulty hard, waivers are on, and the advanced settings, we are leaving the same. So there's the settings we are going with, guys, to start this GM mode off. And like I was saying, Boston's kind of in between uh, being a contender and rebuilding. So what I think we're going to try to do is kind of rebuild on the fly here. I don't see us winning Stanley Cup the first year. I don't think Saw is going to be able to pull off the Stanley Cup the first year either. But I do feel like if we can add the right young players for the right price we can actually start contending by the second year and hopefully like by year three or four we'll actually be right there ready for Stanley Cup. Uh, Tuka Rask is like 34 so I don't think we have too long with him uh, before you know that's not going to work anymore so we'll take a quick look here guys at the lines. Um, as you can see the first line there is solid. Pasternak's going to get good. Krejci and Hayes. I'd rather have Hayes on the third. Third line there I like Spooner. really don't like Bolesky or Stepniak. And then the fourth line definitely needs some work. Uh, defense, Charles 38. So that's, I'm not sure if I want to keep him or not. Because I feel like he could retire at the end of this year. I'm honestly not sure. Um, I think there's like an RNG where sometimes he'll retire, sometimes he won't. I really don't want to risk it, like him retiring for nothing. Like I said, I don't see us winning the cup this year. So I feel like if I can get him, if I can get something for him, I definitely should do it. Krug's obviously going to be our best defenseman moving forward. McQuaid's not bad for like a bottom pair. Seinberg 34, I like to move on from him. Lyles and Miller like on we could have had Dougie Hamilton Johnny Boychuk here uh, This defense is so bad now. So we definitely have to upgrade that like I was saying to grass 28 92 overall So actually we have more with more time with him than I thought we got at least five years I think to win a cup while to is still in 92 in the AHL um, Kokolchev could turn out really well for us in real life He's going back to Russia, but I think in this he could actually turn out to be like a solid second or third line center Seth Griffith could also turn out really good high top six forward. He's 22 years old um, don't really see anything else of talent. Also, guys, I just looking at the potential. I forgot to mention, uh, we did make one change with the rosters. Of course, we're using the most recent roster update, but we changed Nolan Patrick, uh, Pugliarvi, and Lane's potential all to medium elite to make it more realistic. I think right now it's at top six, but uh, Pugliarvi and Lane are going two and three, and then Nolan Patrick's going to go first overall in 2017. So uh, made those guys have a bit better potential, but other than that, uh, rosters are all the same. So Malcolm Subban, I also forgot about him. That's going to be a big question. Do we keep Subban? We have Rask, and like I said, I think our window to win is with Rask, which is in the next five years. And Subban usually doesn't turn out for me. Like, he usually ends up maxing out like an 85 and 86. So right now he probably has more value where teams think he could be better than, I, than he usually turns out. So we might have to move on from him too. There's a quick look at the AHL stats. So I'm going to take a look here at the trade block, see what's going on, and then just kind of decide our plan of action. But like I said, for right now, I think the first year is kind of a wash. Year two, I'd like to start competing for the playoffs. And then year three and four, I honestly think we could uh, win a cup somewhere in there. And hopefully Saad doesn't get lucky before that. All right, guys, so like I was saying earlier, we really need to address that need on defense. So I'm going for Shea Theodore here, who Anaheim has on the trade block. Really good young defenseman. Obviously, they already have Fowler, Lindholm, Vatnin. They don't really need him, I guess. 20 years old, 74 overall, high elite potential. So he's going to be a beast. Having him and Tori Krug as our top pair, I think, is really good. Um, obviously, to get something of value, you got to give something up. So I'm giving up McQuaid here. Four years left on a almost $3 million deal. This is actually a plus for us, giving, getting rid of him. 82 overall, I doubt he's going to go higher than 83. He's already 28, so 
if they actually take this contract, that's a plus for us. Malcolm Subban is probably our second best prospect behind Pasternak, so kind of sucks losing him, but like I said, we have Rask. It's not a huge deal. Hayes is good right now, but we our window is like three to four years, so I think we can afford giving him up, especially if he's a player they want. Uh, Gabriel here is a pretty solid prospect, but he's not signed, so it's basically a free add-on, and I think we have enough prospects like him, it's okay, and then a fourth round pick just to add on a bit. I'm um, also getting Tukarski back here just for the goalie contracts and Subban, and then another roster player for Hayes. So I think we have a bit more value than them. Uh, all three of those things they don't want to keep, and we have two things they really like, so hopefully they say yes to this deal, and they did. So I think that's a huge trade for us. And hopefully that'll uh, you know turn out good in the future. One thing I forgot to show you guys was our draft picks. Uh, we me and Saw decided to keep it authentic draft picks. So we have two first round picks in this year's draft, which is awesome. We have the San Jose pick, the Islanders second, no third or fourth. We have a couple fifths, no sixth, and then our seventh. Next year it's very bad. We have a first, a sixth, and a seventh. Uh, we just traded away our fourth in what was 2017. So we really have to stockpile picks in 2017. Um, even though I'd like to be competing by then, uh, obviously picks are still important if we, you know, don't, if we aren't as good as I think we're going to be. So, really need to stockpile picks there. 2016 draft's not too bad, it's like top heavy obviously, but uh, definitely would like to add some picks here uh, with some trades going forward. I also want to show you guys our prospect situation, so it's actually a bit better than I thought. We just traded for Theodore, we have Griffith, Kokochev, uh, DeBrusque here is in the CHL along with Carlo, Lozon, and Zaboril. So we actually have three young defenseman, all 18 years old, in the system. So obviously Theodore's a couple years older, and he's a bit higher overall, so hopefully he can lead the charge in a couple years of Krug, and then maybe one or two of these guys can be ready by the time they're 20. Moro there, 22, 79. I'm not sure how he's going to turn out. Um, the rest of these guys are pretty much wild cards, but um, our prospect situation is actually decent, so it makes up for that pick situation not being too great. But like I said, my plan is still don't worry about this first year. I actually wouldn't mind finishing last, getting Austin Matthews or even close to it. We can get Chitrin or somebody. And then uh, next year, I'd really like to start competing. And then if not, might even go bottom out again to try and get Nolan Patrick. But we already have a good center. So I think this year, uh, like likely I'd like to get like two or three high first round picks, pick up a defenseman for sure, and then a couple forwards, and then really just start competing after this year. We're here guys been trying to make a trade with Winnipeg just to basically free up some roster space as well as some more salary cap. Didn't even realize our last trade, we actually freed up a lot of space with both Hayes and uh, McQuaid leaving. But as you guys can see, we're here I'm trading for Brendan Lemieux, a really solid forward actually. Uh, he's got three years left on his deal, 19 years old, 10 year overall, low elite potential, has very low value considering that. Um, I'm also adding this player who's just there for the roster spot, he was the lowest value player on their team, and a fourth round pick which... Hopefully we can get a pick back, because like I said, we need some picks. And we're giving them a lot of value here. We're giving them four prospects, all with AHL top six four potential, but they all but they want all of them for some reason. So I don't want them. I'd honestly give them to them for like a seventh, so that's just adding value for free. And then Bleski here also has a good amount of value. He's signed for 3.8 million for the next five years, and he's 82 overall. I do not want to pay an 82 overall player 3.8 million. So this is a huge deal for us. It clears up salary cap. It clears up roster spots, and we actually get a nice prospect back. So if they say yes, this is a huge trade. They said yes. That is amazing. So we now have roster space. We have cap space. I'm going to go sign some young, solid uh, free agents who hopefully you know can grow in our ro in our AHL system and uh, maybe even sign like an AHL free agent. We can trade the deadline or something. We'll see what happens. We're right here, guys. I'm trying to make a small deal trading Gustafson back to Maple Leafs for a fifth-round pick. They have uh, space for a goalie. We have Tukarski now as our backup. We don't need Gustafson. And basically just adding a pick to add a pick. And we'll see if they say yes. And they do. So that's just a small deal that helps us out. Now, guys, I'm trying to sign the highest potential two-way players in free agency. So we have Sorelli here. Top 6-4 potential. Uh, we'll give him what he wants there. Uh, Radula here. Two years. Uh, Valive. Top 4 D. High. Just getting them exactly what they want in case any other team decides to make them an offer. Which usually doesn't happen. But if it does... Uh, if we give them exactly what they want, hopefully that helps us in terms of getting them. Also, this goalie here, Gillies. I think we have four player spots, or four, or yeah, player spots and one goalie spot. So we should be able to sign all five of these guys. We'll see if they say yes. So as you guys can see, Vliv signed with us. Same with Bastilla, Sorella. Uh, so three of the five, we'll see here. Uh, Gillies signed with us as well. And R Radula can't because we have no space on our roster. So we'll see if we can trade one guy we don't want to make room for Radula. So right here, guys, I'm trying to trade Ronaldo, the Capitals, for a fourth-round pick. The reason I'm going with Ronaldo is he has two years left on his deal. Um, a bunch of other players I want to keep less than Ronaldo, but they have one year left, so I don't have to really worry about it at the end of this season. 
He, of course, has two years left. So basically, that's my thought process. We'll see if Capitals give us a fourth. They're, only, they're one of, like, five teams that have a spot on their roster. So it's going to be tough to move guys around. And they do say yes. That's huge. And as you guys can see, after we made room for him, Radula did accept our offer. So a bunch of new prospects added to the team. We're still a decent team. You can see uh, we've got 88 offense, 88 defense, 93 goal, 10. I'm going to fix up the lines in case there's, like, a couple guys i got to move in between the NHL and AHL. And we should be ready for the season. And uh, we'll see what it holds. I really really don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like we're a lot better off now than we were, uh, you know, 20 minutes ago. So here are my lines going into this season, guys. Uh, we got Louis Erickson, Bergeron, and Marshawn on the first. Pasternak, Krejci, and Griffith on the second. So we got a couple young kids there playing with Krejci. Hopefully all that ice down in the second line and playing with Krejci can really, you know, boost their overalls over the course of this season. Third line, we have Connolly, Spooner, and Stepniak. And then fourth line there, we have Ferraro. Uh, Talbot and Kelly. One cool thing guys, I didn't even realize this, but uh, you can actually change a player's position if you go to um, edit customize player in GM mode. So uh, there's only certain things you can do, but one of them is change a position. So you can change a forward to either the wings or center, and then you can't touch a defensive or a goalie. But Talbot was a right winger. I changed him to center as he's pretty decent center. 81 defensive awareness, 77 face off. So just a, just a you know quick note there, if you guys didn't know you could do that, uh, something I learned pretty recently. Defense here, Chara, Krug, Irwin, Seidenberg, uh, John McLyles, and then Miller. So it's still not that bad uh, considering what it was. Uh, Rask and then Tokarski back him up. So our goalie situation is actually better. HL, I really like that first line there for Toronto, Kokochev, and uh, Ferrero. Actually, I'd probably rather somebody have potential. Maybe not, but uh, we'll leave for Fer Ferrero there for now. Um, Neely, Cernak, DeFazio, Sexton, Kempinen. I don't know how to say the last a lot of these names. Uh, Ferlin. And then Sarbosa, Albert, and Kalerik, I think is how you say that. Uh, defense, Moro, Miller, Belmore, Theodore, of course. Hoping he gets a lot of ice time. Trotman and Breen. And then goalies here, we have Smith and McIntyre. So I think you know, our situation is pretty good. Like I said, really don't really care about this first season. It's pretty much we're trying to stock up on picks and prospects this year and then really make our push starting next year. And by year three or four is really like when I'd like to... Uh, compete and the right there guys of course is where you can edit player i just uh want to throw that in there in case you guys are wondering so we're gonna start simming now the regular season and just hope for the best so i just finished simming through october as you guys can see we started off the first month with a 4-4-2 four, four, and two record so not too bad it's kind of what i was expecting from us nothing great nothing terrible so we're probably gonna be middle of the road all year but we'll keep simming here and just uh see what happens we're now at the end of November, guys. As you can see, we're doing a lot better than I expected. 13, 7, and 4. HL team is not doing too good. 6, 13, and 2. It kind of makes sense, though. Most of our good prospects are still in the CHL. That's kind of why I wanted to trade for, like, Theodore. He kind of fills in that space, I guess, in between, like, CHL prospects and NHL-ready players. But 13, 7, and 4 for the NHL team is pretty good. We're third in the Atlantic, so I'm actually pretty impressed. If we make the playoffs even, that'd kind of be a win. Maybe we could compile like those two first round picks for a high first round pick. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, just how things turn out. We're at the end of December here, guys, and somehow our team is still finding a way to win 23, 9, and 5. So I'm actually like just completely impressed. Like, I'm going to take a look here at the rosters. Um, also, as you can see, we're first place in the Atlantic. So that's crazy. I just want to see like how our players are doing in terms of like morale, if anyone's really gotten a big boost. So Bergeron. Uh, nothing there actually. Pashnak's up one, Griffith's up one or two, um, Connolly's up one, and Ferrero's up one, so Kelly's up two as well, he was at 81. Chara's up one, Krug's up one, so I mean our whole team seems to be playing pretty well, which is awesome. Uh, Tukarski there starting right now for this next game, is also up one, so uh, team's performing, I really don't know what to say, like I trade away a bunch of actual roster players for uh, picks and prospects, and they're still getting it done, so if that's how, if you know what if at the trade deadline we are in the playoffs i will probably i don't, I don't want to say i trade away players or picks but i'll see if i can do something to improve our team and maybe just have a long shot at the stanley cup we're now at the end of january as you can see our team is still on a roll 30 14 and 7 all-star break just passed so pretty happy with that still first place in the atlantic we'll see how we're doing in terms of the entire nhl we'll also take a look at our player individual stats um we have three point lead on ottawa there so i'm pretty impressed with that Surprised um, it's Ottawa that's second behind us, not a different team. Um, so in terms of the NHL, we are in, where's our team? Fifth. So <laughs> pretty good, I think. Um, like I said, we we didn't add anybody at the beginning. Like we made our team worse and they're still playing well. So makes me wonder what would happen if we kept the team. But we got rid of a lot of bad contracts. So I'm still happy with that. Krejci there leading us and scoring with 36 points. Followed by Erickson. Pashnak there is doing really well. Marshan, Krug, Spooner. 
Griffith could be doing a lot better. But he's 83 overall. He started at an 80, so he's kind of up 3 overall, even though he's only gotten 7 points or 17 points. Maybe the AHL coach has moved him down the lines. I'll make sure to double check that. Um, we'll take a look here at the goalies. I have a feeling like Tuka Rask might be carrying us, and that's why we're doing so good. Um, 1.8 goals against, that's insane, 25-8, and 8, 0.942. Tukarski is not too bad, 2 goals against, 5-6, and 6, 0.934, so both of our goalies are playing really well, that's definitely helping us out. So, it looks like we're playoff bound, so the trade deadline here, like I said, I don't want to trade away any picks or prospects, but I'll see if we can maybe just like, s trade away some crap players and get a good player back, I don't know, uh, we'll see what we can do. So trade deadline here guys, 35, 21, and 7, still first place in the Atlantic, so let's see what, what trades we can make. Alright guys, we're trying to trade Arneson and Winnipeg's 4th round pick back to them for Matt Halischuk, 82 overall winger who they have on the trading block. Arneson's got 2 years left and only AHL top 2D potential, so I'd actually like to trade him away. And then giving them their 4th round pick backs, okay, as I have a ton of picks in this year's draft, so we'll see if they say yes. And they did. Uh, one thing guys, I think I told you earlier, our 2017 draft is so screwed. We have a first and then a sixth and a seventh. So like, we really have to add picks in 2017. 2015, we're gonna be fine. Or sorry, 2016, but 2017 draft, like we really gotta start uh, stockpiling picks. Right here guys, I'm trying to make a trade for Alex Tongay. Arizona has him on the trading block. He's still a pretty solid winger, 84 overall, even though he's 36 years old. So I feel like he would actually give us a good chance at winning the cup this year. I think it's still an outside chance, but I mean, if we could do it in one season, that'd be crazy. As long as we don't have to give up too much, which I don't think we have to here. McIntyre, backup potential they want. DeFazio's like 28 they want. 5th and 7th in this year's draft, 7th in next year's draft. We're also getting back Lindback because they don't want, so this is pretty good for us, I think, if it works out. Which it did, so that's a pretty good ad, I think, to give us a better chance at the cup. We also get Lindback, who's just like an insurance goalie, and we gave up low picks, so... Pretty happy with that. I don't think we'll be able to make another deal as I don't want to give up anything more than we have. And we don't really have any more of that, you know, low, uh, the low cost, I guess, assets. We trade them all away. So that's probably it for the trade deadline, but we'll see if we can maybe make another deal. So let's look at the other team's train blocks, guys. And I actually found this Russo guy on Detroit, which I should know who this is. I'm a Detroit fan, but I've honestly never heard of him. 23 years old, 74 overall. He's got medium elite potential, though. So I feel like he just got a good um, dice roll at the beginning of the year to see, like, what his potential is going to be. So I'm offering them Bastilla here. He's got top 4D potential, so basically he's trying to upgrade him with a 6th and a 7th. They have really low uh, value on him for some reason, and he has elite potential, which makes no sense. Uh, so if I can get him, it's a huge steal. That's okay, that's crazy. I can't believe that actually just happened. So probably good now for the trade deadline. We have no more assets I want to trade away. Everything's either too important or... Now, pretty much everything we have left is just too important, and I'm not really going to bother trading at the deadline. So this is our team. I'll show you guys the lines. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. So after the trade deadline, guys, here are our lines. We got Erickson, Bergeron, Marshan still as the first, Pasternak, Krejci, Griffith still as the second, Tongay, Spooner, and Stemniak on the third, and then Halischek, Talbot, and Kelly on the fourth. Defense is the exact same. Um, goalies here, of course, is the exact same. Rask and Jakarski. I've also got uh, three scratch players here, Connolly, Ferrero, Lindback. Normally, I keep them up in terms of injuries, you know, because they can fill in, but there's no injuries. But all three of them have to go through waivers, so it's not worth it. I'd rather them just stay scratched. And I can do whatever I want with them at the end of the regular season. Um, AHL team, I don't think it's really changed much. First line there is the same. Uh, defense, we do have that Russo guy from the Red Wings. And other than that, I think maybe our goalies changed the backup. Yeah, we have Smith still starting with Gillies backing him up. So we'll see what happens here a couple more months. If we could win the play, uh, Stanley Cup in the first year, that'd just be crazy. So just simming through March and April, guys. We actually did really well in the last two months. We finished the record of 47, 27, and 8, which is outstanding. Uh, we just got beat out by Tampa Bay there for second place in the Atlantic, which is still really good. Much better than I expected us to do. Like I said, I didn't think we were actually going to make the playoffs this year. 102 points is very solid. We'll see what we finished in the entire NHL here. Um, as you can see, we finished fourth in the NHL. So that's crazy, considering the fact we... Like I said, I've already said this like three times, we traded away assets and we finished fourth. So think about it, like once some of our young guys start like start growing, once our draft picks come in, I think we're just going to win this Stanley Cup a lot sooner than I expected. I was hoping like to start competing next year. We're already competing. So maybe like by year, maybe by next year, we'll win the Stanley Cup. You never know. So uh, we're going to see here, guys, who we're playing um, in the playoffs. And, you know, you never know. We could have a Cinderella run here, the underdogs. Kind of like the Mighty Ducks of 03. So we got the Maple Leafs here actually in the first round. So this should be fun. Um, if this goes to game seven, we already know what's going to happen. So first game here, guys, it looks like we actually have home ice advantage as well, which makes sense. We finished second in the Atlantic. Can't think right now. So here you go, guys. First playoff game, 0-0 after one, down by two. 
JV are there with the winner, so the fact the Leafs are in the playoffs is actually kind of outstanding. Kind of shows this is definitely a fantasy GM mode. Or not, I shouldn't say fantasy, people are going to get the wrong impression, but just a fictional GM mode. Uh, the Leafs, you know, of course, finishing last this year. So, second game, let's try and win a game here, boys. No score after two, and then Parento and Bozak again. So we're down by two here. This is not looking good. I don't know how the Leafs are beating us. Like, especially at the start of the GM mode, like their team would be so bad after all, everyone they traded away in real life. But uh, apparently, somehow they're getting it done with uh, Johnny Burns starting goaltender. So here we go, third game. We haven't scored a goal yet. Brooks like, Marshan gets a goal. We still lose though. Uh, Komarov got one. So I can't believe this. This is a Second place in the Atlantic, and we we're just getting destroyed right now in the playoffs. One goal in three games. Jonathan Bernier is putting on a clinic. At least I'm pretty sure that's who's in net. I'm not positive, though. If we can get another goal, we'll see. Uh, Boyle gets, or Boys gets one. Uh, they do have Johnny Burns, and I think, did we just lose two ones? No, there's one more period left. Here we go. John Michael Lyles, and then Bozak and Smith lost that game 4-2. to two. So, I was all pumped about making the playoffs, and we just got swept four games to none in the first round that's so embarrassing um our ahl team i'm just gonna check here if they made the playoffs uh they did so actually we got a little bit of hope here i don't think i'm gonna sim game by game for the ahl playoffs um as i think it's kind of boring because we don't even know who most of the players are so we'll just sim to the final five games sim see if we want it here that'll at least make up the nhl team two games we just need one more game here let's see what happens loss and are both teams gonna go 0-1-1? They, both teams are in the first round. So I mean, at least both teams made the playoffs. HL team was pretty, sh you know, rocky start there. I didn't even think they're actually gonna pull out the playoffs at the end. And then HL team, second in the Atlantic in the regular season, we just shit the bed in the playoffs. So um, that's it for this episode, guys. What me and Star are gonna be doing is two parts. The first part is the season, and the second part is the off season. So of course. The draft and free agency and re-sign phase will be in the next episode. If you guys want to check out Sod's episode, I will make sure to link that in the description. Besides that, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.